So hi, we're here back at Dart.js in an amazing venue, and I'm here with uh, Nicolas to talk about Dart, which uh, is the topic of the session you've just gave at, uh, at the conference. So for those that have been living under a rock that have not heard of Dart, Dart 1.0 being released, first of all, and maybe Dart in general, can you give us uh, a quick intro to what this really is? Is it just a language? So Dart is a language, a new programming language, uh, but it's not just a language. Uh, it contains lots of tools around the language, like uh, an IDE, a lightweight IDE, uh, where you can do refactoring, uh, debugging, um, uh, completion, code completion. Uh, there's also a compiler to JavaScript, so you can run your code on any modern browser. And we have uh, what we call a VM, which is really an accelerator. Uh, that will run your Dart uh, code really fast in Chrome. So uh, a new language, but that can compile to JavaScript. I mm -hmm. suppose this is what most people will do today. Can you tell us about the differences between um, language that will be compiled to JavaScript in terms of workflow development and performance versus maybe using the VM uh, as a native execution? What are the differences here? So when you compile to JavaScript, you're obviously limited to JavaScript performance, the, the performance of the runtime underneath, right? Uh, which has been, ex I mean, there have been a lot of work going on to make JavaScript really fast uh, in the last few years. Uh, but with Dart, I mean, we designed the language with uh, performance in mind, right? We, the, the background of uh, the uh, Dart designers, they've implemented virtual machines for many years. They've done Hotspot, they've done V8. So when we designed this new language, we said, okay, well, how, how can we make that language really fast? And what you have with the Dart VM, and you can actually see the numbers on our page, dartlang.org, is it can run code like twice as fast as JavaScript. We have a set of benchmarks that we chose, and uh, uh, you can see the evolution over time. And um, you can see initially, like uh, we were really, um, compared to JavaScript, really bad because uh, we were just starting a project. But over time, like in a year, we catched up and now we're like two times faster. How about VM performance? Does that, you said it's an accelerator? Yeah. How much you know, improvement oh, can two, we expect? That's a two times faster. The ones you can expect, I mean, you can see the trend on that graph, which is like, it's, it's getting better and better every day, right? So it's hard to say a number, but a 2x, 3x performance uh, improvement is something we can think of. Right, and the VM is something you can use today, at least when you develop, or if you control you know, the deployment environment. Uh, I think the work now is to get this into main uh, Chrome, mm -hmm. which is, it's not there today. Yes. Okay. It's not there today. Uh, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot of technical uh, things that need to be fixed in Chrome uh, to get Dart, the Dart VM into, uh, into the browser. Uh, we have a project called Old Pan, uh, which is um, basically a revamp of the memory management in, uh, in our Blink uh, engine in Chrome. Uh, and it's supposed it, it, it will enable running two different languages, like JavaScript and Dart, inside the same browser. Okay. So um, can you talk about, uh, I think, uh, the Angular team also is working uh, with Dart, mm -hmm. and how are they using their two technologies, and what are they using it for? So the Angular team, say so they have this project called AngularJS, right, that right. started before Dart. And once they saw Dart being this very interesting platform, they decided to go for Angular.Dart as well, so that they can offer, if you want JavaScript, you have AngularJS, and if you want Dart, you have AngularDart. So as of today, I think the JavaScript version uh, has more features than the Dart one, but the Dart one is trying to keep up to what JavaScript, the, the AngularJS has. Uh, internally at Google, uh, we have built an app just based on Dart and AngularDart. Uh, that was a few weeks ago, we had, um, Someone uh, from Google presenting how they use Dart and how they use Angular Dart to build that. Uh, it was a, a sales application, and they were really amazed about how productive they were. They were. Right. I, I heard things about you know an entire team being brought uh, to develop a, a critical app because this is about mm -hmm. the the ads division at, at Google. So, and they had no prior knowledge of neither Angular nor Dart actually. Yeah, so they had. I, I think their background was more about Java. So the uh, the app used to be in uh, GWT. And they switched to Dart without I mean, knowing the language, or regular Dart without knowing the framework. Uh, and the number that um, that they gave us is that it took it, it took them six months to build the app from scratch, uh, dog food it, uh, and the dog food went pretty smoothly, and they were able to just launch it. So awesome. now pretty much everyone uses it. 
Great. So it's definitely used at least internally at uh, at Google. So uh, you didn't wait for uh, a 1.1 version to talk about performance. I mean, it's really a feature from the beginning, and not even 1.0. It, it was, as you said, uh, something you looked at when you designed the language. Uh, tell me, maybe for Dart to JS, which is the compiler to JavaScript, which you've mm -hmm. been heavily involved in. Mm -hmm. um, give me an example of what kind of optimization you're doing there uh, that is really proving to be uh, useful, you know, performance-wise. So the nice thing about the Dart language is that it's it works, it operates in a closed world environment. So when you're compiling to JavaScript, you can make a lot of assumptions of things that will happen. Uh, at runtime, like you know that certain fields will never change or certain fields will always get that type. So you can do this kind of global optimizations uh, that, uh, for example, like tree shaking, type inferencing, all those nice like standard compiler optimizations uh, that JavaScript engines cannot do because they don't have this closed world assumption. So dart to js implements all these uh, compiler optimizations and generate a JavaScript code uh, that sometimes actually runs faster than the JavaScript version that you would write uh, by hand. OK, great. So um, how about the tooling? Is there anything you recommend? You mentioned uh, an IDE. To, is, you know, web, web developers don't really like IDEs. I mean, the term, they have tools, but they mm -hmm. don't call them IDEs. Do you force people to use an IDE before they can use Dart? No, 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 we, we don't. Uh, actually, I, don't, I code in VI as well, uh, because that's my work environment, my workflow. Uh, so you can code in VI, Emacs, uh, whatever editor you like. Uh, we actually have we also have plugins uh, that for different IDEs on the names I don't have right now. But uh, I mean, it's, you're not just forced to use that IDE. Uh, you don't have to use an IDE. You can actually also use the command line and run an, ana an analyzer that will analyze your source code and tell you where your errors could be. Mm -hmm. um, so no, we don't force anyone into using the IDE. Awesome. So maybe one final question before we wrap this up. Um, is Dart just meant to be a uh, web language, or can you imagine using it maybe on the service side to write command line tools? Or It, it seems generic enough to be able to do that. Yes, it, it is generic enough. So Dart started as a um, solution to all the problems we saw with web development. Uh, so that's why we started Dart with web in mind. But you can actually do way more than just web. It, it can run standalone, so you can run the VM standalone. Uh, you can actually build a server. It, so if you know Node.js, Node uh, that's really similar. You can build a server-side service, service Dart code. Uh, we have I.O. libraries that do files, sockets, HTTP. So um, yeah, it's pretty much ubiquitous. It can be run anywhere. Very good. Well, congratulations on the launch of Dart 1.0. Thank I you. I hope. Uh, it all goes well. Uh, looking from the workshop that was done here at .js, it was completely packed. So there was definitely a lot they of interest there. were blown away by the technology. <laughs> Great. Let's hope uh, we have a lot of other people uh, interested in this. And uh, with that, that's all the time we have for it. Thank you, Nicolao. My pleasure. And uh, go and check it out, dartlang.org.